What's up, everybody? It's Thursday night. That means it's corner to corner time. <laughs> it's me and it's me, Stan Grubb. My, my good buddy Rob Hefner is with us tonight, and of course, as always, we've got Fast Eddie Lane on the as as we've heard before on the ones and twos. I always like that phrase, by the way. Just hanging out, and uh, hey, we're here on the Beyond Rings on Radio Network. Live and in, in in living color for you. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Rob, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here from the nerve center of parts unknown. You know, making my winter residence in your mama's house. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Why's well, gotta be my mama's house, man? <laughs> well, if it is your mama's house, then I'm right. Uh, come on upstairs. We'll do this show face to face. Well, alrighty then. <laughs> Get me out of the dungeon, sir. Eddie, how are you tonight? I know you're convalescing, getting getting over some little kid's germs. Yes, having been to the BJCC this past Monday night for Raw, somebody should have stayed home in bed. Instead, no, they got around me and got me sick, you tick turds. <laughs> tick turds? Go back and watch Smokey and the Bandit, okay? <laughs> I guess I just haven't heard that phrase in a while, but okay. Junior, uh, remind me when I get home, I'm going to slap your mama. <laughs> but daddy, daddy, I'm hungry. We ain't got time for all that. Sorry. I got to get the Bandit. <laughs> well, let's see here. You know, folks... Um, Normally, when we start this show, we, we, we kind of delve into all the things we're going to cover, but uh, you know, breaking news coming into tonight's episode, um, we found out some unfortunate news. Wrestling has lost yet another, uh, and in this case, we've lost ECW original Axel Rotten. A uh, bit of a shock to the system to find out that he has passed. Unfortunately, the news has been reporting it was most likely a suicide. We do know that Axel had been struggling with uh, sobriety. He had some issues with drugs and alcohol previously. I also know that he had been recovering from a major back surgery last year. If you if you recall, looking through you know any of your normal news sites, whether it's Lords of Pain or otherwise, um, there was a GoFundMe account started where a lot of wrestlers had really been lending a hand to help cover his medical expenses. And last I had heard, he was doing a lot better. He was actually on his feet and uh, just getting things going. 44 years of age is such a – man, it's, it's so young to be found, uh, especially to be found in a hotel. It's, it's, it's the most awful way to have anything happen. I feel for his family. My, my thoughts and prayers go out to his family and friends. Um, and, and the worst part of it, in any time we, we see a performer – uh, go so early in life, you know, it's it's tragic and it's sad, but it's even more hard hitting for me individually because I, I did talk to him before. He was a, a guest on uh, on another show. It, it was a controversial interview that we had when we had him on the air. We were uh, on a former network where we were talking to him about. The goal was to talk to him about his sobriety, and uh, when he came on the air, unfortunately, he was. He wasn't sober, and, and I'm not saying this to put the man down. I'm just telling uh, telling the facts as to what happened. Um, but I do remember the interview with him. He uh, gave us a few minutes of his time, which was nice. At the same point, it was pretty uncomfortable, and uh, unfortunately, it did. The conversation did end pretty abruptly. But uh, in in conversations afterwards on uh, Facebook and Twitter through the years, we were able to kind of patch things up and give him our best and. And uh, as a matter of fact, in his GoFundMe account, I was able to donate a little bit just to be of help. You know, the the tragedy of all of this, it it really brings to mind all of the different, not just Axel Rotten, but all of the different performers who have gone way too soon, but also gone because they unfortunately lost their fight with their demons. Uh, I put on Twitter earlier today, and and I stand by this, you know, I hope that uh, Axel has found the peace and and death that he couldn't find in life because the Lord knows the guy was, was tortured and, and troubled. and uh, It's a sad sad kind of thing. I hate to start a show on a sad note, but uh, you do have to recognize the things that happen around you. That Rob, would... can you, can you <laughs> think times where uh, you had seen Axel Rotten? I know that you had seen him in ECW at least once or twice. 
Oh yeah, I mean, I think he was the uh, one of the founding pillars of ECW, and just like we've heard too many times in professional wrestling and in an entertainment industry as a whole that um, the demons get the best of them. And a lot of times what happens is it happens once they've realized the demons and they're trying to battle the demons. It's, and, and, you know, until the facts come out, but, you know, you see it time and time again, somebody who, is dealing with their with their issues they go through treatment they go through rehab they go through sobriety or whatever and then what happens is they have a, a fallback you know they they have that momentary lapse of whatever and then what used to do the job can kill you and you know it's a sad thing to see and one day this business will actually have a support, you know, to, to help people. And um, I don't know how many more it's going to take to lose, but... Well, I think, I mean, when you look at uh, WWE, they've done what they what they can in regards to sending, sending folks to rehab whenever it's needed. I mean, they did a whole lot for Scott Hall. They even attempted to do it for Sonny. Um, and for Jake Roberts, I mean, these are just examples, but they also helped. They helped just incredible. They helped Peter Polacco. Um, you know, these are this is a company that is willing to reach out and help out wherever they can. But you have to be willing to accept help. Um, Eddie Guerrero is another example of a guy who did realize his demons, and you know, unfortunately, he passed not necessarily from giving in to him, but just because of the overall damage that it did to his body over time. And it's. It's tragic. I mean, it's it's a real shame to see these kinds of things happen, but it does open the eyes of uh, not just the wrestling community as far as the guys in the back, but also us fans as we see yet another, you know, just succumb to a lot of different stresses and depression and, and drugs. And it's the ugly side of the business. This is the ugliest part. When you watched uh, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, one of the reasons that the wrestling community didn't like the film so much was because it did it did open open the eyes to a lot of the the nastier parts of the business, the things that happen that we don't necessarily hear about a lot of the time. Yeah, you know, they took some creative license, like any movie will, but at the same time, it really does open your eyes. I hope that if there are others outside of, kind of like Axel was, you know, outside of the ring, really not not active as much, and that if there's those that are struggling right now, this is a, a surefire way to, tell yourself to get some help and to realize you're not alone um, whether it's your family your friends or just just one of the things that is happening around you you certainly want to take the time to get some help yeah I agree more I can't I mean I can't agree more I guess I should say um, you know take the opportunity you know reach out to those people that you can reach out to and if you don't know who to reach out to, all you have to do is ask. With this world of social media, you put the word out there and you'll get the help that you need. I mean, um, with the WWE, with their program that they have, buying all the companies that they have bought, all the libraries they have bought, you know, the resources that are there. But again, like you said, Stan, the only help, <clears throat> the only way you're going to get help is if you ask for it or if you want it. Um, right. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And unfortunately, time and time again, you see what happens. You know, the damage of what had been done makes the body weaker. And, um, you know, just sometimes it catches up to you. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, it, one of the things that, that I can remember the most about, about seeing Axel on television was uh, you know a lot of people get, give the guy credit for his hardcore work you know where he was one of one of the quote unquote chair swinging freaks on the tag team on ECW with him and uh, Balls Mahoney but at the same time he was capable in the ring he was a trainer he was he had a very good mind for the industry and really had a lot to say he was very outspoken uh, Eddie did you have any kind of uh, communication with him in the past very little um, and none over the last probably about four to five years. Um, 
I had read different things. I'd experienced different things through other people through third party. And I take some of that with a grain of salt. And I there depending on who it is, I take some of it with a grain of truth. Um, you know, it's one of those circumstances where you genuinely feel for the person because the demons can be stronger than the spirit sometimes. And that's right. the sad part about it all. Because how many times have we have seen those that we thought were the rock of Gibraltar crumble because of those demons? And, you know, whether it be in pro wrestling, whether it be in family, friends, other business ventures. And this is something that I tell people on a true basis. I won't say a daily basis or a weekly basis as needed. I will say this. You can help someone if they want the help. You can tell them they need help all day long, but until they acknowledge it, until they clinch it in their minds, yeah, no. Now, we don't know the celebrated circumstances that led to today, as in the last 24, 48, 72, or last week. So I'm going to sit back and say, let, as I've said many times before, in circumstances of this ilk, Please let the authorities do their jobs, folks, for everybody listening, because we are. We're not rushing into anything. We're not going to sit back and say, well, we heard this. and Well, we can say we've heard this, but we won't sit back and elaborate on it because we weren't there. We don't know. We're not the coroner. We're not the medical examiner. So we're going to let them do their job and see what they can find out. And this is going to be a time, a time, timely process. I don't know if I made any sense out of that whatsoever, but I will be running for Supreme Court justice in the very near future. I will be that moderate that we desperately need. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I mean, this one thing about this show is different than other shows is we're not going to be slinging the what ifs and the, hey, I heard this. It's, you know, let the truth come out and then we will discuss the truth and the facts. We won't discuss the what ifs. And, uh, oh, I heard this or, hey, I talked to somebody and, and, and you're exactly right. You know, at this time, we don't, the rumors don't need to be going out there. And that's what happens with all this stuff. You know, somebody heard this or that. And then, you know, we have 24 hour news stations that are sitting here going, you know, I have nothing new to tell you, but we're still going to be here live. And, uh, oh, by the way, about the Supreme Court justice, I heard that this session that if Clarence Thomas doesn't ask a question, it'll be 10 years since he's last asked a question while the Supreme Court is in session. That's a long time. How did everybody get away with not asking a question <laughs> during, during a Supreme way, Court session? That's the, same way that the, some, the same way that certain people on the Supreme Court feel that they can legislate from the bench, which is totally not what the Supreme Court is there for very true that's i mean they they asked him they said hey how come you haven't talked and he goes well by the time it gets to me i read everything i need and what's it's not my job to badger people it's my job to figure out the answer right and so he'll just sit back and you know if i was him at this point i'd be passing notes to the other justices be like hey this is a question i want i just don't want to break my streak <laughs> A decade of destruction with Clarence Thomas. Yeah, a decade. Of, a de <laughs> Maybe he's still hiding from that sex harassment uh, scandal. Well, it certainly wasn't a decade of discussion. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> but hey, in uh, in other news, we did find out this week. Unfortunately, you know, I, I hate leading off of bad news, but it seems to be out there, so it's got to be mentioned. Way to be uh, gloom and doom, buddy. I know, I know. I'm just trying to bury us before we even get out there. Well, eats. Rob, you got to remember, his screen name is Tan from Krypton, and Krypton exploded before Superman was born. Maybe he's getting the explosions out of the way before we get to the the red and blue spandex. Yes. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's a depressing thing to think about a planet. Is he the crow sting? Or like, are we stinging in reverse now? Like, <laughs> you're going to be in the rafters, and then you're going to come out blonde with highlights? I don't know. I think you would attest to the fact that I don't look good in, in black clothing or black leather. So I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not really my thing. <laughs> but how many times have we tried? Oh, you know, it was, it was a dark time in Stan Grubb's world. 
the last 30 years. (laughs) (laughs) Screw you, buddy. (laughs) Oh, Rob, I was going to be (laughs) cumulative. <laughs> for those but, who don't know, Stan and I have been friends for a very long time, and there was a time where Stan would become the center of attention in the group because of some jokes or something I'm saying. And then one time, one time only, Stan had this monumentous comeback was, ha ha, Rob, always got to be the comedian. Ah, oh, very funny. <laughs> and I have never let him live it down. And I never will. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, everybody's got their role. I guess mine is just to be the guy that gets picked on from, you know, every single hour of every single day. But it's okay. You know, I don't mind. It doesn't doesn't affect me at all. There's no... La, 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 <laughs> la, la. Well, remember... There's no dartboard with your picture on it. No, I promise you. <laughs> just remember, hey. there, can, there can only be one Cam Newton. Everything else is just the balls. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yep, yep. Hey, speaking of Cam Newton, did you see the uh, clip where Snoop Dogg <laughs> was asking him questions at the Super Bowl press conference? No, did not see this. I, oh, <laughs> I imagine uh, it was it's, funny it's, as hell. It really was. He's he's sitting there in the corner, and Cam's just answering questions. You know, he's pointing to people. Yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. And then all of a sudden, he sees Snoop, and he's like. What are you doing here? He's just like stunned, and Snoop kind of does like this little bit that it was funny. I, I I would I would try to repeat it, but I'm definitely not cool enough to repeat what Snoop Dogg says. <laughs> not sh- that he said anything wrong. It wasn't bad. For shizzle or stizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, and by the way, Super Bowl is this weekend. We are predicting. A Carolina Super Bowl ring. What you mean, we, well, white I, boy? <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Who mean we? What you mean, we, wow. Kimis- what you mean, we Kimisabi? <laughs> it's getting, a little, getting a little creepy over here. Y'all, y'all not cheering for the Panthers this weekend? Come on, guys. I respect the Panthers, but I haven't been cheering for them. <laughs> you're a closet Panthers fan. I mean, you're in Alabama. I don't want to give you a hard time, but, you know. Okay, look, I cheer for Cam. I cheer for Cam because he's no longer playing for Auburn, our cross state rival. <laughs> I cheer. I cheer See? for Cameron Artis Payne because he, he is no longer playing at Auburn, our cross state rival. Actually, Rob, I'm going to bow out of the way. If you would please go ahead and take point, I'll, I'll follow up. <laughs> well, and you know, well, well, the statute of limitations is around, so now he can cheer for Cam Newton. But um, I think. You know, there is no statute of limitations on the Iron Bowl. <laughs> true, true. Sometimes it's just wrong. But I'm a football fan, and I know that Peyton's days are numbered. So, hey, I always like to see when somebody goes out on top, and I wouldn't mind seeing him get a ring, but you can't deny that the Panthers have the momentum, have the team. It depends on what Peyton Manning shows up on Sunday. Is what's going to happen. But I am not looking for, well, you know, it is cold play in the, in the, in the halftime show, so. Yeah, that yeah, makes that's, no that's sense. that's reason enough to change the channel. It really is. I don't like cold play. I'm not really into the whole cold play. Isn't Beyonce going to be there, too? God, I hope that's not. another reason to change the channel, but. Um, I mean, she's attractive, but I don't know that I want to watch her at halftime ever again. I think it's time that the WWE throws down like a Roman Reigns gets beat down for 15 minutes or something in an empty arena like they did that one time, you know? Sweet. Another halftime heat. I'm in for that. Let's do halftime heat. You know, or maybe we can bring out, you know, um, The Miz and he can do another horrible 15-minute segment. And then we can watch AJ Styles beat him down. That was the best. Did you see the meme that somebody posted today about uh, him, the Miz asking AJ Styles about Claire Lynch? <laughs> it was great. So it shows that the first meme. He's like, "So AJ, you know, you finally get on Miz TV, and I have a real important question to you. I ask the hard questions here." And he goes, "So tell me about Claire Lynch." And the next picture is AJ beating the crap out of the Miz. I thought it was great, but it's all good. 
The Super Bowl so, will be over, and then we can start thinking about NASCAR season. So, yay! I'll be. You rang my bell on that one. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. We go to the bonus <laughs> round. Now, you have to put things in proper perspective. Peyton did not play the entire season this year. We're talking about a man, of course, um, out of the games that he did play. Threw for 2,200, almost 2,250 on the yardage. Almost 225 yards per game. Nine total touchdowns. Remember, he was out half the season with an injury. Cam Newton this year, 3,837 passing yards. 35 touchdowns. The boy's got impressive stats. And the oh, sli- yeah. And the slightly older boy, Peyton Manning, has got impressive stats, too, for the time that he was in there. I'm older than both of them, so I can call them kids. <laughs> If anybody wants to look at their speakers and say, did he just say that? Yes, I did. I'm older. F off. As in fringe. (laughs) Fringe like Shawn Michaels wears at the bottom of his outfits. No, but seriously, let's put the world in proper perspective. Peyton Manning is a tried and true icon in the world of the NFL as well as um, as a quarterback. You have to mention him in the the realm of the all-time greats. His statistics are there. Um, Cam Newton has come a long way in a short amount of time and has become a tremendous on-field talent. Um, there's been a lot of controversy stirred up artificially about all the celebrating. Look, if you're good, prove it, then you can do it. If you don't want him to celebrate, stop him from scoring. If you celebrate after every offensive gain or every first down, it becomes old and redundant and people start getting bored with it. If you celebrate after scoring, great. Give the football to a kid. Look, brighten up a kid's day. I love it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to football. F O O T B A L L B R five four nine. The Denver <laughs> the Denver defense in all reality very well played, especially with Demarcus Ware and Von Miller at point. These two are going to be a force to reckon with all the way across the board. They can run on every plane and they've got the cardio to play for sixty minutes plus overtime. Carolina's defense is strong, but has been suspect on certain facets of the game. There are weaknesses on both sides of the ball for both teams, including, let's add that third dimension, special teams. This is a game in a real-world scenario. Run the simulations all you want to. Skewed evidence will be put into play for both teams. Only if you have completely and totally 100% accurate empirical data going into your algorithms can you run a true simulation. And it's going to have this game coming down to the fourth quarter. I've actually, pre- yeah. I've actually predicted that because of Carolina's defense and if they smell blood the first time, Peyton Manning may get knocked out in the second quarter because he's not all 100% there. But if he can make it all the way through guts determination, the old school gunslinger coming back one more time, we could see Vegas really pissed off with the Denver Broncos winning. I'm not going to be upset if either team wins. Go ahead, Stan. I think there's a lot of um, room to ask questions on both sides of the ball. I mean, Peyton Manning is... Like Rob said, he's coming up on the end of his career. Would it be fitting for him to to get a ring? Absolutely. I mean, you can't look past the Denver Broncos. They have a very solid defense. And and you're right in the regards of the the Panthers' defense having questions when it comes to the fourth quarter. That's been my complaint all season long. You know, you get through three quarters of the game, and they're dominant. Fourth quarter comes and goes, and you're like, what the heck is going on with these guys? They just get gassed. They played the Dallas Cowboys – and, you know, thankfully they won that game, but when they played the Cowboys three quarters of the game, their defense is sharp and attentive and playing hardcore football and really making some great plays. You get to the fourth quarter and you can see on the sidelines they're getting oxygen. I mean, it was a bad scene. So, you know, if we're looking at an honest, honest prediction for the game, I'm figuring Cam Newton will have at least one or two interceptions um, because anytime you're throwing the ball as often as he does, you're going to open yourself up to mistakes, especially when you're playing, you know, one of the other, one of the best defenses in the league. And at this point, I guess you could say that they are the best, the the other best defense in the league because they're in the Super Bowl with the Panthers too. So you can't look past that. I mean, Peyton's health is a concern. If if uh, Keith Lee, 
I would screw up his name. If Luke gets back there, if Thomas Davis gets to him, Josh Norman, if they get to him and get to him enough, Eddie's absolutely right. That's going to be a concern. I saw a depth chart earlier this week that showed Tate Manning as a backup and then later was changed to a starting Right. I thought, I thought Osweiler was actually hurt. Is he healthy? He's healthy. He's healthy. The only reason he played was because one per- – Peyton's performance had gone down, and then right. he was hurt. So they put Luke in, and then they 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 brought in Peyton as the relief that one game. And it's just games that they're playing. It's just like they say this person is is limited in practice. Well, he might be limited in practice, but he's going to get out there and light it up on game day. And um, we'll see. I mean, both sides of the ball. I mean, you got Julius Peppers enjoying. A resurgence in his career on God the Carolina yes. side. Yes. And, you know, if Jaron Allen could play. But one of, the, one of the coolest things I saw was an interview that they did with a guy. I can't remember his name. But he lines up at the corner cornerback position for the Carolina Panthers. He was unemployed for 15 weeks of the NFL season this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean – Fifteen weeks, he's asking. He's asking everybody for a job, and then, bam! Week sixteen, he's starting in Carolina, and then intercepts a pass on the first game, and now I he mean, might get a ring. You know, and Jared Jared Allen is another good example of that too. You know, most most of the season, he's with. Um, I don't remember where we got him from. I, I hate that. I don't the remember Bears. where we got him. That. Thank you. Yes, we got him from the Bears. And he comes in and immediately makes an impact. Unfortunately, he breaks his foot, but the word is he's going to try to play this weekend. Um, also, there was another guy, Roman Harper, who uh, – thank you. Thank you, Harp, for following me on Twitter. I thought that was the most awesome thing ever. Um, anyway, he was in a cast last week. Supposedly, he's expecting to play this weekend as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, this is the game where – if you're if you're calling it like a poker game, you're going to put all your best cards in in there, and and I think you have to go with Peyton Manning if you're if you're Denver. Um, Osweiler's a, a serviceable backup, and I think he'll be able to hold his own. But if they if they get in the face enough of the offense, I think that the Carolina defense will really set the tone. I'm excited, can't wait. But the most important thing about the Super Bowl is that it makes it one more weekend closer to Daytona. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, one, one of the best parts about this is that we're all NASCAR fans here. <laughs> so when we get to NASCAR season, when we get to Daytona, it's going to be just as fun to talk about that as it is to talk about football and wrestling. Oh, in my house, it's not Christmas in December. It's Christmas on February. Well, I think we're related my, my, with, between my dad and myself. Yep. And so we, uh, you know, my man Tony Stewart, don't know what happened to him or what's going to happen, but hey, it's going to be good. But hey, let's get back to wrestling since this is a wrestling podcast, I guess. Podcast? What does that word mean? We 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 do we do internet radio. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to insult anybody. Radio first, <laughs> podcast later. <laughs> and actually, so, break now. Radio later. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. Dang, that snuck up on us real quick. Hey, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the more uh, some of the other news in the uh, world of professional wrestling. We'll talk about Raw. We'll talk about, hey, a, a game that we got a chance to test out this week, which was really a lot of fun. We'll talk about it all right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. See you in a couple moments. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at YouTube.com slash PottyHumor or subscribe at PottyHumor on iTunes and Stitcher today. The YouTube Determined Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Man, Ruff, Fast Indy Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you you know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen, because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 
9 Central Standard Time. Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Let me drive. How do you know when it's time to give up the keys? When your dog grabs your keys from your lap and your lap is on the floor. Yep, it's Jeff Foxworthy for Rad saying, when you party, be sure to designate before you celebrate. It want to make it home alive. Let me drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Well, please don't drink and drive. It's not fun. Welcome back, everybody, to Corner to Corner on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. We're live on beyondringside.com. Hey, if you're ever wondering, where can I find Corner to Corner when it comes down to the show's over and we want to hear the replays? Well, you can catch us on iTunes, you can catch us on Spreaker, and, of course, you can catch us here on the rotation uh, here on beyondringside.com as well. And, And as well as that, we will try to keep you informed on our Twitter account at corner the number two corner sg uh you've also got myself stan from krypton at rob hefner at strcp for 21 for brian and of course uh, the beyond ringside twitter as well at beyond ringside we'll be uh talking uh, all week long about our our show as we go into the next one planning guests we will be doing some interviews here and there um i don't know how often we'll do them uh, as we talked about last week, we are going to try to talk to Mr. Chris to Josephs. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about for Lucha Underground, by the way. Season 3 has just been greenlit, which is exciting. It means that they're confident in the product now after the first season and now the first few episodes that they've been airing. I think Lucha Underground is the, the dark horse if you're looking at pro wrestling right now. It's really an exciting time for them. So, I mean, they've got a a lot going on. WWE apparently attempted a talent raid to sign the entire – I can't believe I read this headline, but it's out there. Apparently, WWE officials had a meeting with Lucha Underground in an attempt to sign a good majority of the roster. Some have said the entire roster, but a majority of it has been been just the majority of the talent. It's interesting because you know Triple H has got his finger on the pulse of what the fans are into right now. And if I'm if I'm Triple H, if I'm WWE, I'm recognizing that there's a viable option there for cruiser rates, for Lucha, and just for more of an entertaining product. And as more stars come to NXT and get promoted up to the main roster, you've got to start backfilling, and that's the right way to go. I do respect greatly the the honesty from Lucha Underground and just not downplaying WWE but also holding their own and not giving in because it's really easy to go for cash grab. I mean, you see Alberto Del Rio, he had his his controversy when he left and uh, when he finally got back on board um, it really was a cash grab for him because he really hasn't done anything here in WWE Um, he hasn't really done anything to earn any of the kind of notoriety that he had before he, he departed the first time. I would honestly kept him in Lucha, and I think they should have they should have probably did a little bit more to keep him. Um, he probably wanted the big payday, but at the same time, you have more to offer when you're part of a grassroots campaign like that. And I think Lucha Underground, we're going to find that they're the number two. They are the, the number two promotion in, in wrestling right now. One, because spoilers are hard to come by, which is a big, big deal in this industry. You have to tune in. Uh, Ring of Honor is a lot like that, except that their tapings, when they happen, you'll run into spoilers more often. And then after that, it's almost like – I wouldn't want to say they're forgotten, but it's they pass very quickly. 
it's it's one of those things where you're not going to see TNA come into the number two position for a little while. Although, continue to show growth in their viewership, which I'm happy for them in that regard. This week really was the first time that they had seen a dip, but they're still over where they were with Destination America, which to me is a positive. Um, when we look at pro wrestling in general, the things that we see, the two main things we see is that the audience is fickle. So it doesn't matter necessarily who you like. You're going to see what the promoter wants to see. Sometimes you see a talent sneak through and you see the fans really have a role. Look at what they did with Daniel Bryan. They didn't have a choice. They had to put a guy out there in the main event. At the same point, you see guys like Dolph Ziggler and and Cesaro for a couple of good examples that get shifted to the background at every, every chance they have. Not to say that there's a lack of talent, but there's certainly a lack of drive from the creative machine to put them forward on the card. We talk about this all the time. We talked about it last week. It'll continue to be a topic of discussion until things change. Will it ever change? I kind of doubt it, but certainly viable to talk about. Um, in wrestling news, I did want to talk about this. We did find out this week that Brett the Hitman Hart is battling cancer, prostate cancer, which is devastating for Bret Hart, the the man, because he's dealt with so many different health issues leading up to now. The stroke, the concussion, uh, the difficulty getting his, I believe it was the left side of the body back up and running. He was paralyzed to a certain extent. All of these things, these struggles he's faced just after leaving WWE in the major Montreal screw job. Now finding out that he is battling cancer, his brother Smith Hart is also battling cancer. Um, there's a lot of a lot of talk about it. The WWE acknowledged it, and you've you've seen an outpouring of support. It's just it's an emotional time for for wrestling right now. You, as you get closer to the biggest show that wrestling has, it's all of these things in the in the outside that are now starting to filter in. It's it's disappointing. It's sad to see things happen like this, especially to our heroes. When we see it to a guy like Bret Hart, um, I know Rob, myself, and and, and our and our co-host, of course, Brian, uh, is a huge Bret Hart fan. And it's difficult to see them struggle this way. We see this with uh, Ric Flair on television, where we just know that he's not really the same Ric Flair that we grew up with, and it's just kind of sad to to have to deal with. Rob, your thoughts on Bret Hart? Oh, I mean, it's just, I agree. Like, I mean, how much can one, he could take the Hart family with all the stuff that they've got going on that just seems to keep going. You know, they finally had a, 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 a high spot with the, with the release of the Owen Hart DVD and the, um, the Owen Hart honoring Owen's legacy. Um, but then to the, have this, you know, thrust him into the limelight again with this, this kind of thing. Um, I believe that he's a fighter, and I believe that with the resources he has and, the, and that he has available to him, that will become available to him, um, I think he's got a good chance. And um, hopefully we'll be sharing some good news that he's cancer-free here in a few months or a year, um, whatever the timetable is. But our thoughts and prayers go out to him and to his family. And just, you know, I mean, he is a legend in this business, and it seems like, you know, Blackjack Mulligan is still down for the, you know, he's still down and um, waiting for answers on that. And it's just, it seems like we, we mentioned before we went on air that it just seems like every day there's another legend of some kind of entertainment industry and in entertainment business that's leaving. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's kind of bittersweet. I mean, you, you like to see, your favorites in headlines and in the news, people talking about them. It, it's almost like a, a remembrance kind of thing. And then to find out that there's more challenges happening, especially to a guy like Bret Hart, who he's just faced so much adversity in his life, losing Owen, uh, dealing with so much that's happened to him individually with his health, all of the things that he's had to struggle with. I mean, and, and not to mention, I mean, in his personal life, it, not just losing Owen, but it being, being divorced. Uh, the things that have happened to this guy, you know, he can't buy a break right now. It just sucks, and I, I feel for him. I don't even know how to describe how anybody can possibly deal with all of those things all at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But I did read the other day, and this was a post from Smith Hart on Facebook, where Smith was talking about how we may still not see Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame because of Owen's wife, Martha. Apparently, there's still – there's not litigation necessarily, but apparently Martha is still refusing to allow him to be inducted. The, the question here becomes, do you let the, the fans and, and the WWE universe celebrate the man that you knew, or do you continue to hold on to a grudge that – you know, in a lot of in a lot of different ways, it rightfully so, you're holding on to it. But at the same points, when do you finally say it's time to stop? You know, it's time to to forgive and to let the bitterness go because Owen Hart and and the wrestling world, it, it's time to give this guy his just due. I mean, if you're looking at a legitimate professional wrestling Hall of Fame, and Rob, Brian, and I talk about this all the time, would we ever? If we were ever to have it statistically for a Hall of Fame, would Owen Hart truly get in? And it seems right now that really the only way he gets in is is because of the fact that he died in the fashion that he did. Take from that what you will. I mean, it's not to say that he wasn't a talented performer and he didn't have a solid career. He actually had a great career. But the truth of the matter is, when you look at the legacy of some of these guys that are in the in the Hall of Fame, comparatively, it can become difficult to see why they're actually inducted. But this is the WWE's Hall of Fame. If they want to induct the Brooklyn Brawler, they'll induct the Brooklyn Brawler, <laughs> um, whether we like it or not. I mean, they inducted Drew Carey. Right. They inducted right. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I agree. You know, at what point are you holding on to something? And I kind of think, I kind of look at the Owen Hart thing and comparing it to what's going on in, like, professional baseball. You know, like Pete Rose was, again, they – continue to ban on Pete Rose for the Hall of Fame or to be reinstated in baseball. Well, then I also read just recently that the Cincinnati Reds had said, you know what? So what? We're putting him in our Hall of Fame. You know? So there's going to be a time where regardless of the wishes, Owen Hart's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I think there's a lot of his career that nobody got to see. Right. You know, because... Back in the day, there was not evidence of things like that. You know, we didn't have the media and the internet that to, to be readily available. But um, for those listening, I mean, we're going to have a roundtable. Like Brian and I and Stan and I, we have all talked about this. We're going to sit down. One show is going to be, you know, who's in the Hall of Fame that in real at reality shouldn't be there and who is not in the Hall of Fame and why are they not in the Hall of Fame? Um but uh, it's 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 what it is, you know. I, it's, it's interesting to see who's going to be the second person to go in this year. I don't know if they announced it or not, but um, I know we got one so far. If I may, I've got to go ahead and take this one over here because this is a discussion that I've been in the middle of all, up and down the different shows here on the network and here on the Beyond Ringside radio station itself. Um, I have to constantly remind myself that the WWE Hall of Fame is still a Vince McMahon baby. It's not the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. It's not the NWA Hall of Fame. It's not the Calgary Hall of Fame. It's not even the Cauliflower Alley Hall of Fame, which I hold in very high regard. It's right. nowhere close to that. It's Vince's baby. It is an entertainment spectacle meant to revolve around WrestleMania weekend where the stars come out, where the, you know, the superstars and the women, not the divas, the women of the WWE come out in full four star dress. Even Mr. Blackwell can't even pick on half these people for what they wear unless Cena decides to show up in jorts. Or Steve, or Steve Austin goes back to the men's warehouse and has a button pop off five seconds before a curtain. Mm. Remember that speech? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, still to this day. Vince is going to put in who Vince wants to put in. Vince is going to keep out whoever he wants to keep out. And there's not a doggone thing that the three of us can do about it, that nobody on this station can do about it. And we have to remember, we're dealing with an... We're dealing with an individual in Vincent Kennedy McMahon who has a somewhat well-deserved ego that is about the size of the California coastline mm -hmm. that is illuminated brighter than the sun and the aurora borealis put together. 
This person took a small regional company run by his dad and his grandfather and turned it into a juggernaut. And sometimes the juggernaut trips and falls, but it's still the biggest game in town. And the WWE Hall of Fame, once again, Vince is going to put who Vince wants to put in there and say, this is my baby and you'll like it. If not, oh, well, I do. Sad but true. Um I mean, I agree. I agree. Because, I mean, look, how many years did it take Bruno San Martino to be placed in the Hall of Fame? That's a great example. You know, That's I a mean, great example. Yeah. <clears throat> Ultimate Warrior. Uh, also a good example. I mean, when you think about some of the, the Macho Man, Randy how about Savage. that? Yeah, I mean, when you put when you when you really look at it, 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 it truly is. It's Vince McMahon's. It's his baby. There's been a lot of conversation I've heard in the past of them putting together a physical location, and eventually it will happen. It, it's it's more of putting things together and having it. But at the same time, the thing to remember is each year WrestleMania is in a different location, and the Hall of Fame takes place at that location. So keeping those two together. Uh, it's a tra- It's like a traveling circus. They have to pack everything in and take it with them. <laughs> I got. I got the place they should have done it. Remember in Times Square when WWFE had that restaurant sports bar? I think when they let that go, because consider how close it was to MSG, and how many sellouts did they have at MSG over the years? A place that is very oh, yeah. badly neglected by WWE now. How many years did Bruno sell it out? The Billy Graham, Dusty Rhodes, Bob Backlund. How many years did they sell out on a consecutive basis, Madison Square Garden? Well, right. if they were to get that piece of real estate back in Times Square, it would call for a long-form commitment. Vince would have to at least put 30 years on it because of what happened in the past when they shut down the restaurant. He could at least build a partial statue-based and um, memorabilia-based <laughs> Hall of Fame in that location. And it's not going to be oh. huge. It's not going to be big, but I think it's a start. Yeah, and I mean, I've we, we've talked about it, and I actually saw it just recently where, you know, I thought that, you know, WWE, the marketing machine they have, you know, they the, the figures, they're always looking for another way to bring the figures out. You know, you have a Hall of Fame line, that the only way you're in this line is if you're in the Hall of Fame. And you make it limited edition, but when you think about it, just exactly, exactly. It's Vince's Hall of Fame. He's going to put who he is because there's a reason that Coco Beware went in the Hall of Fame before Bruno San Martino. Right, right. There you is. Know? There's definitely reason. Well, and there was a definite reason. I mean, there was an issue between Bruno and the WWE for a long, long time. And there's, a, and there was. We, an, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you first. Well, I mean, you got to think. Would Ryan, Would Randy Savage be in the Hall of Fame today if he hadn't died? That's a great point, and, and the answer to that question would probably be no, he wouldn't. Um, I, there was definitely a disconnection between Randy and, and the WWE, Vince McMahon specifically, because of different things. There were rumors that – dirty, nasty rumors that you've heard, and then, of course, there's the fact that he went to WCW, which Vince took a lot of these departures when his wrestlers would go to Atlanta – he took it very personal. Wouldn't you? He, those that stayed and stayed loyal, he's rewarded greatly. But even with Bret Hart, there was a hesitation to put Bret in the Hall of Fame because of that. Razor Ramon. Because of the fact that his people left. Mm-hmm. Razor. Razor and Kevin Nash. Yeah. And Kevin but, Nash. But why did I mean, they put the Kevin Nash in? The reason we see is... Kevin Nash and Scott Hall in now is because of Triple H. Yeah. But by the same token, those were two that led the revolution, if you will, in WCW. That's why you have a hard time. I mean, okay, look, I love a good conspiracy theory. That's why when it was the rumor was going around that Vince McMahon had it um, had his hand in uh, ECW. I'm sitting back going, I love it. I'm also one of the ones sitting back believing that Vince McMahon is also a silent backer of Ring of Honor. Um, I would not be. Oh, I surpri- think you're right on that. I would not be. Look who all they've gotten recently, and look at the new Japan ties. I think it makes yep. perfect sense for Vin- uh, for Vince and Triple H to be um to have something to do with Ring of Honor. It's been a great feeder system for them so far between Ring of Honor and New Japan. Hell yeah, my friends. Uh, but look at it like this. Look at Evolve now. They have a working relationship with WWE. I'm willing to bet you that if all else fails. 
Triple H knows that Lucha Underground lost $13 million last year. And that I'm willing to bet you that Triple H sees the viability of Lucha Underground on the El Rey Network. And will also sit back and say, if we can help, let us know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's no secret that Triple H has a great view of professional wrestling in general. He knows how to make it successful. And there's nothing that says Lucha Underground couldn't be a viable third brand for WWE. We could very well see yet another brand extension or brand split simply based off of the amount of talent that they've been signing. And I think, honestly, I think that's the direction that they're heading. When you look at overall, wrestling right now is just – it's so full, jam-packed with talent that we're seeing WWE slowly do what they did before in branching out and opening doors. I mean you know, getting back to the Hall of Fame, if, it, if WCW had won the Monday Night War, we would see the WCW Hall of Fame, and that would mean we'd see Goldberg in the Hall of Fame. You'd see Eric Bischoff's so, face on the door. Well, exactly, exactly. And everybody would do the same complaints. Oh, it's Eric Bischoff's baby, and you know, only Canyon, and only only the cruiserweights are going to get in because they were Vince or Eric Bischoff's creation, quote unquote. Uh, these, ECW. These are the right, right. But that's the thing that we would have seen had they won. So it's feasible to say that you know WWE is going to put in who WWE wants, but and Triple H has gone on record multiple times with this. They will offer to put people in the Hall of Fame. And he said that there's a good number of people that they've contacted to induct into the Hall of Fame, and people have said no. Bruno was one of those people for a long time. Um, I would be willing to bet that Randy Savage was one of those for a long time. I think had Rick Rude not passed away when he did, he'd already be in. But because of the because of some of the things that happened with Rude in his personal life, I think they get nervous about inducting people that have had drug problems that have had you know issues and they weren't able to come out on the other side the only reason that we saw scott hall come out of the other side was because was because scott hall had gotten clean and had gotten sober you know these are the things that we've seen and what we've seen with wwe is because they're publicly traded because they're a family-friendly product We're seeing them say, okay, well, we're going to avoid those like China who may have played a major role, especially in the Attitude Era. We're going to avoid them because of the fact of what they also bring to the table privately and personally. Never mind the fact that China and Triple H, um, you know, had their thing. And there was a lot of rumors that a lot of their tension stemmed from Triple H getting with Stephanie. Yeah, it's another another show for an, another time, but there's a lot of different things that happen when we look into when we look into uh, what's been happening in wrestling. Um, it, it's it's interesting when we keep seeing when we keep seeing these things that happen. I mean, you've got Sonny who's in the Hall of Fame, and she's just come out with a porno. We've got China who's <laughs> I saw this the other day too. Apparently on TMZ, China and Sonny are apparently talking about, I can't believe I'm going to say this, doing a porn match. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, it was, it was hard enough to see, to see Sonny kind of give in and, and start doing these things after so long of hoping that it wouldn't come to that. Never mind that, that Sonny had done these things before. Um, you know, China has done these things as well. Triple H has been honest about it and saying that he didn't want to go that direction because of what happened. But it's it's interesting because what we were seeing here is that there's a definite – I don't want to say agenda, but there's a prerequisite. And you have to recognize that it was what WWE brings to the table. Um, it's it, – it's going to be interesting to see as we come in with the next few years who gets inducted. I think the next logical choice for this year's Hall of Fame would be the uh, the Freebirds, especially because they're in Texas. I mean, I agree. I think the Freebirds are a part of the glory days. You know, I think it's time to, to, to honor that kind of past. But, you know, 
one thing about it is if if you're if you, if you don't like what products out there and you wish you could push things and then run things different um there's a great game out there that you can now download for free um That's what right. is it you know Adias Mania Wrestling on iOS and Google Play thank nice you segue, Rob. right Yes, sir. This man's a professional right here. 80s Mania Wrestling. It is an app available for free on the Google Play Store and, and Apple iOS. It is a great – it's made by Checkmate Creative. Um, one of the things that stands out right away, as soon as you open up the app, it's very easy. The buttons are big. You don't have to worry about hunting and, and finding all the different things. It's labeled very clearly. You can start your own promotion. When you start your own promotion on here, you get the opportunity of choosing the owner, choosing the type of promotion that you'd like to run, whether it's great wrestling, a southern-style wrestling. I believe there's one that's more related towards WWF's kind of appearance type thing. Uh, There's a lot of different talent that they have. There's some parodies of. If you look at their – it's a card kind of like Supercard but not quite because – Supercard is more one-on-one based, points based, whereas this is more of book your own promotion. And uh, we've been playing this game pretty much all week long. I downloaded it just uh, last Sunday as I saw an ad. Uh, RPG Wrestling, by the way, on Twitter happened to tweet this out there, and I I thank them for putting it out there for us. But we're, we're greatly impressed by this game. Rob, what did you think about this game when you first kind of delved in? Well, I mean, at first I thought it was kind of a campy looking, but um, it's kind of neat. Um, I agree. You know, the um, mine I, I chose the American Best Championship Wrestling, and um, my commissioner is the guy who gets a hundred dollars every show. Looks like Ronald Reagan, <laughs> but um, I like it. I mean, it, it, it's it's very based on you know, I think WWE in the eighty early you know late 80s early 90s with their cartoon character you know wrestlers um but it's it's what a lot of people want you know it's it's you can run your own fed you know and uh, it's easy to play i mean if i can play it and understand it then it's it's pretty simple um right now my current world title holder also is the tv champ so it's pretty neat yeah, that's that's um, when you put together a card on here, you get to do a lot of different things. You get to set up a microphone spot where they're going to do an interview. You get to set up uh, little skits or training montages. I haven't unlocked a whole lot, but the shopping system here is actually very cool. Um, you're earning money each week, and when you earn this money, you can buy different different talent. You can buy different cards. Like, uh, for example, there's a, kind of a parody on Andre the Giant called – Enormous Pierre, and I'm just looking at this right here. He's a, he's ranked as a main eventer, and in this, the cards all have different rankings. You got main eventer, mid card, uh, curtain jerker, and I I know there's another one. And for some reason, I just can't remember the title of it. I apologize. Um, the cool thing is on the back of each card, there's a description for their stats. So it's got skill, mic skills, pop, which means the crowd reaction, and push. In other words, how how well they fare when they're in the ring. You get you, each card has its own. Each card has its own value, so you're you're earning money while you're running shows, and as you continue to earn enough, you can buy these different cards. For example, here's one for a guy named Slugger Johnson, and on the back he's he listed as a curtain jerker. He's an athlete. Uh, he's a parody of a of a pro baseball player. In, and his stats are, are kind of small. There's uh, six across the board almost, except for his push rank, which is only four. Whereas when you get to the uh, enormous Pierre, he's got eight in the skill, six on Mike, which makes sense because Andre wasn't much of a talker. Uh, Pop was 12 and push is 16. So that's a really <laughs> solid talent there, but you're going to have a hard time dethroning him as far as uh, if you ever make him champion. Right. Um, when you look at some of the venues, they give you some options right off the bat. You've got the fairgrounds, which is a capacity of 2,000 people. It's free to use, though. The thing is, as you're going through your week-to-week or your month-to-month <laughs> excuse me, programming, 
you are as you book a venue, you're using it for that month or that week, so you're not able to use it again. You can go to a high school gym where you pay a, a hundred bucks for the, to use the facility, and you can draw twenty five hundred people. The coolest part of these venues is some of these venues are not able to be used for your pay per view events. They can be used for your local events, but not quite the pay per views, which is. Right now, I'm actually using the same type of promotion that Rob's at, the uh, American's best, America's Best Championship Wrestling. And you've got the options of selecting the banquet hall, the high school gym, or the fairgrounds. You build up your stars. You can, you can, you can see them in the match simulation. It's a very simple display. Of it shows you how the crowd reacts. It shows whether or not they're a good guy or a bad guy, and if that's a positive. And as you go forward, you see the ratings for each match. Your ratings for each match will actually impact the ratings for your show. And by the end of your card, you get an average. Right now, my average show rating is uh, two stars. Rob, what's yours? Well, mine is actually the same thing. And uh, one thing I've noticed is you can actually build a push. You can build a storyline. Like um, it get, It's kind of like you, know, you have your house shows and then you have your big event. And... You keep putting the two people together. If you have a good match, like like one of my guys um, is called my big guy right now is called Arizona Arizona Chance. He's kind of like a um, he's kind of like a uh, like a Indiana Jones type guy. Well, then at the time, my my number one bad guy was Mister B. Looks kind of like a cross between Mister T and um, Big E. Um. But you build a chance with those, with the promos and stuff, and then what happens is your your final one that that month your, is your is your pay per view, and that's where your titles change hands. You know, that's where you have your titles defend a lot of times, um, and so it's it's it, you can actually build a build a push. You know, you learn which ones don't go, which ones do, and with your promos and stuff. So yeah, as you build your guys up through the weeks, there's a chance they'll take the title or. If you want them to lose the title, so I think it's neat. I mean, my my only thing is, I wish you had a better selection of, you know, type of match cards and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, I wish there was more of an influence to, um, pour, more of an influence for as far as selecting. The winners and losers. I don't necessarily mind that it simulates it and kind of picks it for you. I do like that, but I wish we had more of an option as far as uh, from a booking standpoint, just just selecting winners. Especially if our end goal is to see a specific guy come out on top. But you know, I, I for the for a free program for a free game, if you're looking for something that's more in the the reins of say uh, promotion wars or something like that, for those of our, our listening audience that that likes the wrestling simulators. It's very good, and you do have the option there to buy more credits and more coin to buy more cards, buy more match types, uh, buy more gimmicks, buy more different traits that you can give to different bad guys. So all around, I think uh, I think this is a great game. I certainly recommend it, and I think that we will definitely be doing this more often, whether it's an app on the phone or a computer program. We'll probably end up talking about one of our favorites, TNM. The wrestling simulator that uh, Oliver Kopp made famous. You know, there's a lot of different things that's out there. So, corner to corner is just that, from corner to corner, and as Rob says, from pillar to post. We don't mind uh, delving into it. So, it's a real, real lot of fun, and we hope that everyone enjoys it. Give us your thoughts and your comments, of course, on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere you want to send it. Let us know what you think about these games. And hey, feel free to hit up the group that actually makes this application. 80s Mania Wrestling. It's at 80s Mania Wrestling. Yeah, Great and, game. And I'll, and I'll say, you know, if you have a product out there that you want to review on our show, you know, hey, reach out to us. We're not, we're not afraid, or, or we're willing to kind of review any product if you have it out there that's wrestling related, and uh, we'll tell you how you feel, how we feel about it. Um, you can reach out to us on our, on our Facebook page or Twitter handle at the Twitter. The Twitter. The Twitter or the Facebook. The book face. Sorry, buddy. I just got on the Facebook. <laughs> I've been on the road a while. I'm tired. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rob Hefner with his Ricky Morton impression. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Hey, we're coming up towards the end of the show here, but before we go, a couple of quick things. Next week, we're we're excited to be bringing in the third member of our triple threat. That's Brian Taylor. The uh, trifecta of terror. That, that's right. That's right. Brian's been a good friend of ours for a long time. We've known each other. God, you could say we've almost grown up together uh whether it's wrestling sports we've just been hanging out and having a blast so we're really excited to bring him on board uh this is a project that we've been wanting to do for years and finally getting it off the ground is a great feel he's going to be joining us next week and and in through the weeks to come and as we've pointed out you know it's really based off of how schedules handle some weeks it's going to be myself and rob sometimes it'll be all three of us sometimes it might just be me or maybe one of the other guys with eddie you know just just kind of depends on how things flow but no matter what happens we will make sure we do everything in our power to continue to entertain the masses because we are the party host for the beyond ringside radio network we're not we're not the flagship yet, but you know maybe we could one day be the mothership. Yes, for the dozens and, and dozens, dozens of people out there watching or listening. If you're watching, <laughs> then you need to leave my house because you're creepy. No, yeah, that's a little. Get out of I mind. mean, I think for years we would sit around and we would talk during pay per views and wrestling events and just in general, and we'd say, you know what, one day we need to get a wrestling show together, and then. Stan went on and became famous, and so we're kind of riding his coattails into the world of famous people. <laughs> um, I'm hardly fa- maybe internet famous, if, if that's such a thing. <laughs> but the truth is, what I can't tell you all with air quotes is we're riding his coattails just to do the swerve and to knock him off. Um, but Again. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not the first time they've done it, so don't be shocked. Hey, this Saturday, Yep. I like this thought. This Saturday is National Pro Wrestling Day. Holy crap, that's the greatest idea ever. How long has this been a thing? This has actually been going on for a couple of years. It is hosted by a number of companies based out of the Northeast, and Chikara is normally the one that spearheads it. It is this Saturday, February the 6th, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time Start Time. Yes, one day plus. That's it. It's going to be at the Goodwill Beneficial Association, 100 Madison Avenue in Redding, Pennsylvania. Uh, if you've got your GPS ready, three, two, one, go. Zip code is 19605. Once again, that's 100 Madison Avenue, Redding, Pennsylvania, 19605. Already signed for this great show. Include the Chikara Grand Champion, Princess Kimberly. Taking on pro wrestling star Mickey James. Dasher Hatfield taking on Missile Assault Man. Ladies Challenge Match, Heidi Lovelace taking on Solo Darling, and I do mean darling. <laughs> Mr. Touchdown, Mark Angelicetti taking on Pinky Sanchez, making his reemergence after quite an absence. Worked with Pinky a couple of years ago. Great to have met him then. Great to see he's back on the scene now. And those matches, of course, presented by Chikara Pro Wrestling. Jakara will also be presenting one-on-one encounter, Hallow Wicked versus Ophidian. Young Lions Cup 12 will take place at National Pro Wrestling Day this Saturday. It will be a series of four three-way eliminators. And then you will have the finals where they face off for the Young Lions Cup. Three years in the industry or less. Eliminator number one, I believe the pronunciation is Wani. Taking on versus Prakash Sabar versus Ashley Vox versus Jeremy Leary. Eliminator 2, Argus versus Officer Warren Barksdale versus Luke Lawson versus Hermit Crab. Eliminator number 3 just released an hour ago. Ken Broadway versus Del Miexo versus the Proletariat Boar of Moldova versus Nutrius X. They will be revealing the fourth Eliminator tomorrow. Fighting Spirit Wrestling. <clears throat> Excuse me. Presents the House of Pain. Excuse me, the House of Pain. Got to get that right. It's D-A, not T-H-A. A uh, good friend of mine, Nick Payne, also the entire House of Pain, had a chance to interview them up at Chattanooga, Tennessee last year for the uh, AIWF Super Show. They're taking on Magma, Superstar Whiplash, and the Suntan Superman. Excellence Pro Wrestling will present One Night Only versus Danger Jameson and Havoc Tag Team Challenge Match. They have just added the debut of Scoot Tatum. If you have not, do a little homework before you sit back and go, huh? Look first, huh? Later. Also, the Wrestle Factory 
will be hosting a very special workshop, Intro to Pro Wrestling, this coming Saturday. And one other nice little feature, the man himself, Chuck Taylor, with a <coughs> cough button, with a special feature called Dinner for You. I'll let you look those up and find out more in depth. We're running out of time here. I just wanted to get all that in before time ran out. Once again, that's this Saturday, Reading, Pennsylvania, National Pro Wrestling Day. Excellence Pro, Fighting Spirit Wrestling, Chikara Pro, and even more to be announced in the next 24 hours. Hey, it's National Awful Wrestling Day. It's awesome. Yeah. I think that's the greatest thing ever. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm going to have to check that out. Folks, thanks again for listening to us this week. We're definitely happy to have been able to uh, hang out and, and give you our thoughts and opinions and uh, really just share share what's been happening in our world when it comes to pro wrestling and, and all sports in general. You can follow us on Twitter at Corner to Corner SG. That's Corner, the number two, Corner, and then the letters SG. We'll probably take the SG off of there at some point. No, we won't. Well, we kind of got to. I mean, eventually we got to just keep it at corner to corner. But, you know, there's other people on Twitter apparently like to use our name. Even though you're not doing anything with it, you know who you are. Have you thought about like corner it. to corner radio? Hey, radio. Is, oh, yes. Yes, I have. Of course I've thought about that. <clears throat> it's what I thought. Right now. Uh, you can catch us on Facebook at uh, the Corner to Corner Show. Corner to Corner Show. That's Corner, the number two Corner Show. On hey, Rob. Facebook.com. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Have, yes. you, have you figured out yet? I'm an ass. <laughs> oh, no. It's just, it, he's conceited. Ouch. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, con- I'm contrite and convinced. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> it's well, Corner, the number two Corner by Stan's house. Because I'm great. Stan is a god at corner.com. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, who was that, that? masked man? <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> man down. Signal double zero. <laughs> Help me. Help, Help me. me. Help me. My ego's damaged. Help. Oh. I can't feel my legs. <laughs> oh, oh wow well, hey everybody thanks so much for joining us feel free to check us out on uh, iTunes Spreaker and of course in the rotation here at beyondringside.com next week we are excited we're going to be bringing the third member Ryan Taylor will be joining us next week you guys please take care of yourself Rob final thoughts hey guys it's just a great time for pro wrestling it's pro wrestling day Saturday get out and, and support your local programs you know, if you know there's uh, an indie fed around where you're at, go see the show. That's how they make their money. Um, we talk about these wrestlers who perform hurt, that go out there. They do it because they want to. They want to put on a good show, but they can't put on a good show if you're not in the seats. So do what you can. Go out to the show and see it. And then put the word out that you went there and let us know. Because we would love Corner to Corner to be at some of these shows. So let us know where they're at. And we will try to get out and see you all. But with that thought, thanks, Stan, for letting me come and hang out tonight. Thanks, Eddie. And um, it's been great. I'll see you all later. Peace. Bye. Stan, take us home. All right, but uh, you guys can't stay here. <laughs> I don't plan Folks, to. We'll I'm just going to raid your refrigerator. Well, you know, I do have plenty of soda. Guys, everybody, take care. We'll see you next week right here on Corner to Corner. And remember, when it's Corner to Corner time, it means you've only got one more day till Friday. See you next week. <laughs>